Hi everyone. Today we're going to explore and talk about photophosphorylation. I'll try to explain it as best as I can. So let's get started. Photophosphorylation is light energy being transformed into ATP. And this is very, very similar to oxidative phosphorylation, which happens in animal cells. And in simple terms is how the cell creates energy currency for it to function. And it's part of the whole cellular respiration process. So throughout this video, I'll be naming a couple key differences and similarities to help you better understand and make connections between the two. So once plants absorb light energy from the sun, through chlorophylls, they begin to establish an electrochemical gradient that is necessary for photophosphorylation. And this is one of the first stage, stages in photosynthesis and it involves light dependent reactions. It's also useful to know that the light absorbing pigments along with other proteins create photosystems. And there are two types of photosystems, photosystem one, which is PS1 and photosystem two, which you can see there in purple. So PS2 is first in the path of electron flow. So I know it's kind of confusing because it's named with a two in the end, so you would think that it's the second one, but it's actually the first one in the path of electron flow. And it's named that way just because it was named, it was discovered after PS1, so that's just how it works. It's a little bit funny. So just remember that PS2 is first in the path. And lastly, there's two different kinds of photophosphorylation, cyclic and non-cyclic. So the first difference in oxidative phosphorylation is that the electron donor is NADH and the acceptor is oxygen, which forms water in the end. And it's part of the electron transport chain. In photophosphorylation, however, it's the opposite. Water is the electron donor and NADPH is formed in the end. So let's move on to the structure of it all. The two plant photosystems move electrons from water to NADP+, forming NADPH, like I mentioned. At the same time, protons are pumped across the thylakoid membrane, shown here, and energy is conserved as an electrochemical potential. So before we get to all the details and zooming into how it works, I wanted to provide this slide so you can see that protons are pumped into the thylakoid lumen, which is shown here. And you can see that the N side here and here is negatively charged and the P side is positively charged with many protons. I also wanted to show you the pancake-like structure of thylakoids and which are found in chloroplasts and show that if we zoom in we're able to see what's actually happening which is what we're going to talk about next. So let's talk about the proton gradient. The thylakoid membrane contains the reaction centers, the electron carriers, and ATP forming enzymes which allow it to function, allow the photophosphorylation to function. So it's important to point out that protons are not able to cross the membrane on their own. So they kind of need a bit, of, a bit of help. And electron flow results in the movement of protons across the membrane, which is how, which is the help that they need from the stromal side or the end side, which is here, the stromal side, to the thylakoid lumen, which is the P side. So what you see in this figure is the movement of electrons, which are shown in red. And what's happening is that electrons from water are moving through PS2, and then they continue through electron carriers to PS1, and finally to NADP+, forming NADPH. The arrows you see in purple are the movement of the protons being pumped into the lumen due to the flow of electrons that I just described. They move into the thylakoid lumen through the carriers that link PS2 and PS1, and once again go into the end side through the proton channels that are formed by CF0 of the ATP synthase, which is right here. And this subunit also catalyzes the synthesis of ATP right here. Um, so like I said, ATP synthesis is possible because of the synthase. 
and it's a large complex made up of two components, CF0 and CF1. It is called C because it takes place in chloroplasts, that's easy, and they're very similar in structure to the function of the ATP synthase in mitochondria for animal cells. And the analogous compartments or the complexes are CF0 would be similar to F0 and CF1 is similar to F1 of the ATP synthase in mitochondria. So ATP is formed from ADP with a phosphate, just like in mitochondria. And this is due to the proton gradient that is established that I mentioned earlier. So let's talk about numbers, because you see a bunch in this figure that I drew in. And around eight photons provide enough energy for the synthesis of three ATP molecules. And this ultimately yields two NADPH. So just multiplying this by two. So ultimately, these ATP and NADPHs will be used to reduce one molecule of carbon dioxide, which is the next step. So that's it. Today you learned about photophosphorylation and what it looks like. I just wanted to point out that all drawings in this presentation are made by me and they're modified or redrawn from my Principles of Biochemistry textbook, which is cited here. I hope you enjoyed and thanks for listening.